Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to find the missing side length of a rectangle given the area and then either the length or the width. Let's jump into number one where we have a rectangle has an area of 20 square feet and a length of five feet. What is the width of the rectangle? Now remember, we find the area of a rectangle by multiplying the length and the width. So area equals length times width. But here we already have the area and we need the width. So what do we do? Well, we actually use the same formula and use what we know, so what we are given, to figure out what we don't know. That's the width here. So let's write our formula out. Area equals length times width. Now I'm using a cursive L just so we don't confuse that L with a one. Use what works best for you, just make sure you know it's an L. And then I'm using a dot for the multiplication sign instead of an X. That's because we're going to be using algebra in this video. X is a very common variable in algebra. So we don't want our multiplication sign mistaken for a variable. So this is just a different way of writing out multiplication. We're not changing anything here. Now we plug in what we are given. Our area is 20 square feet. So plug in 20 for the area equals the length. Well, that's five feet. So plug in five for the length times the width, which is our unknown. So keep the W there. That's our variable. We need to figure out what W, the width, is. We now have 20 equals five times what? So five times what number gives us that area of 20. Now for our first example here, these numbers are fairly simple to work with. So we can just figure this out using mental math. We know five times four equals 20. Our missing side, the width is four feet. And we can double check that by plugging four in for the width. Five times four equals 20. So we're good to go. And that's it, we're done. But before moving on to number two, where the numbers won't be as simple to work with, I want to go through what we do if we have numbers that aren't as simple to work with. In other words, if we're not able to use mental math. Basically, what we do is set this up the same exact way but we go through the process of solving a one-step equation. So area equals length times width. Let's plug in our area of 20 equals the length of five times the width. That's our unknown. So we have a one-step equation here. And remember, when solving a one-step equation, we want to isolate the variable get the variable on one side of the equation by itself. We need to isolate W here. Well, we have five times W, so we need to get rid of that five. But how do we do that? Well, we need the inverse operation, the opposite operation. The inverse operation of multiplication is division. So we need to divide the right side of the equation by five. Remember, whatever we do to one side of an equation, we must do to the other. So divide the left side of the equation by five as well. On the right side of the equation, these fives cancel each other out. W is now isolated. So we have W equals, and then on the left, we have 20 divided by five. That gives us four. So we get W equals four. The width is four feet. So we can write that out again. The width equals four feet. So we get the same thing that way as well. Let's move on to number two. Taking a look at number two now, we have a rectangle has an area of 133 square meters and a width of seven meters. What is the length of the rectangle? Let's start by writing out our formula. So area equals length times width. Now we need to plug in what we know, what we are given. 
Well, we know the area is 133 square meters. So plug in 133 for the area equals the length. Well, we don't know the length. That's our unknown. So keep L there times the width, which is seven meters. So plug in seven for the width. Now we have 133 equals the length times seven. So what times seven gives us that area of 133? Well, I'm not sure off the top of my head. So we're going to need to solve this. We're going to need to solve this one step equation. So we need to isolate L. We need to get L on one side of the equation by itself. Now L is being multiplied by seven. So we need the inverse operation, the opposite operation. That's division. So we need to divide the right side of the equation by seven. Whatever we do to one side of an equation, we must do to the other. So divide the left side by seven as well. The sevens on the right side of the equation cancel each other out. So L is now isolated equals. And then on the left side, we have 133 divided by seven. So let's come over to the side and work through this by hand. So 133 divided by seven. Let's start with one divided by seven, which we can't do that. So we need to include the three now and do 13 divided by seven. So how many whole groups of seven in 13? How many sevens in 13? Well, only one. So one here, and that one needs to go above the three since we did 13 divided by seven. Now we multiply. One times seven is seven. Subtract, 13 minus seven is six. Bring down the three, and now we have 63 divided by seven. That's nine. And we actually hit 63 exactly here. So nine times seven is 63 subtract and we get zero. So 133 divided by seven is 19. And this is our length. So let's write this out. The length equals 19 meters. And to take this a step further, we can check this by multiplying. So we know our length is 19 meters here. So let's do 19 times seven, just to make sure we get 133. So 19 times seven here, seven times nine is 63. Carry the six there. Seven times one is seven plus six is 13. So we do get 133. And you may be thinking, why did I use an X here for the multiplication sign? Well, there weren't any variables involved there. We were just doing a multiplication problem. So we weren't going to confuse that with a variable. So there you have it. There's how to find the missing side of a rectangle given the area. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.